This is Richard Wolff from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This question comes from Anthony Sarich, and he wants to hear what we have to say about the experiment in worker co-op type organization in Yugoslavia from the end of World War II and for several decades during the regime of Marshal Tito. I'm glad to talk about it. It is one of the important experiments uh, of the 20th century in worker co-ops. It has some important differences from what we are talking about today, but it also is a very important story with important lessons for us to learn from. As indeed all of the 20th century's experiments were, those efforts to go beyond capitalism, whether in the Soviet Union or the People's Republic of China, Cuba, Vietnam, and so on, uh, these experiments in Yugoslavia also play their role. As Anthony Saric rightly understands, what they called their experiment in Yugoslavia was workers' self-management. And we push something somewhat different workers' self-directed enterprises. The difference there, the key words, management and directors. And to understand the difference, we can look at how capitalist corporations work. At the very top of the capitalist corporation are 10, 15, sometimes 20 people who sit on something called the board of directors. The people on that board are selected by the major shareholders in an election every year where you get one vote for each share you own. Since the vast majority of Americans own no shares in these companies, they have no votes. Typically, the bulk of the shares, a determinate amount, uh, is in the hands of a handful of people. So they vote their shares and they determine who's on the board of directors. And the board of directors is the real authority in most large corporations. They decide what the company is going to produce and what technology it's going to use and where production is going to be located and what's done with the profits that everybody's labor helps to generate. Okay, management is something quite different. One of the things the board of directors does is hire managers and tell them what to do. So the pecking order here is very clear. Directors and major shareholders, that's the top. They own the business and they run it. They hire managers who in turn hire the workers. Self-management, which has been something capitalism has played with, tried occasionally, experimented with, involves workers being told, we're not going to hire a manager to overlook you, to manage you. We're going to let you do some or all of the management yourself. It gives workers more power? Absolutely. It's an interesting experiment, but it is not the same as having the workers in the dominant position of directing the enterprise, hiring managers if they want to or not, but really being the folks in charge. Wow. Our argument about worker co-ops has to do with what we call workers' self-directed enterprises. The idea being that the workers are their own board of directors. They don't have any other directors. They may or may not be self-managing, but the key here is the higher level, the dominant level, the real control. So what you had in Yugoslavia was a step in that direction. Giving workers their own management is no minor matter. No disrespect is involved here in noting the difference between that and going the next big step, which is the workers, not merely managers, but the directors of the corporation. So that's an important lesson we learned, that there is a kind of halfway point, if you like, a midway point. It isn't quite capitalism with directors over managers over the mass of employees. It is something else, 
workers are doing self-management, but there's still the question of who's the director. And often in Yugoslavia and elsewhere, the directors were people outside of the workers who self-managed, state officials of one kind or another, party officials, and so on. Then there's a second lesson from the Yugoslav experience. Very important. On the one hand, you had the workers managing the enterprises, sometimes pushing even further in Yugoslavia in the direction of becoming directors, which in some cases they probably were. But on the other hand, you had a government and something had to be worked out between the power of the government and the Communist Party that ran that government, on the one hand, and these worker self-managing enterprises on the other. And that government had its own agenda. If you recall the history, Tito was independent of the Soviet Union and its Eastern European allies. It carved out an in-between place. It wasn't part of Western capitalism. It wasn't quite part of Soviet socialism. It was a neutral intermediary. Yes, with a communist party. Yes, with a socialist system. But still independent. They therefore had a hard row to hold to stay independent of Stalin on the one hand, and of Western capitalism on the other. So that government had its own agenda, which wasn't always the same or consistent with what the worker self-managers, especially those who became almost directors, what they wanted. And there were tensions between them. And this was a whole new experience. Most of Eastern Europe, starting with the Soviet Union, had government enterprises. The government owned, operated, all of the basic industrial enterprises. It may have hired managers, but there was no question that the workers were not the directors of these enterprises. State officials were. It was state officials who replaced the private board of directors, not the workers who replaced the private board of directors. And so in Yugoslavia, there was a lot of tension, a lot of conflict. Who made the final decision? the party and the government on the one hand, or the workers in their self-management operations on the other. We have to learn that that kind of attention exists if you have a worker co-op based economy. It would exist if workers were their own directors. If we had workers self-directed enterprises as the normal enterprise structure in a new economy. And then there would be tension between them and the government, and that would have to be worked out, presumably in a way that respects a certain role for the government, but also respects the self-determination of workers' self-directed enterprises. You know, capitalism, too, has had a long and difficult struggle, which is not over, between the power of the private corporation and the government. These days, for example, the power of big corporations in the media, Google, Alphabet, Apple, Facebook, on the one hand, and government controls on the other. That's being fought out in Europe, in the United States. So there's always this kind of tension so long as these institutions coexist, the state over here and the self-directed enterprises over there. And that will continue. I hope this clarifies the relationship, the learning, the experiments that link what was tried in Yugoslavia as a way to get beyond capitalism and what we've been talking about as worker self-directed enterprises as the next phase of economic systems beyond capitalism. Thank you again to our Patreon community among other things, for providing these important questions. And I thank you, as always, for your support.